In this next section, we are going to be looking at costing for materials and labour costs. Now, just a quick reminder then, what are the key areas you need to know for this particular chapter? First of all, in our materials, key techniques or knowledge areas. First of all, stock costs. Remember, you need to know, understand, and be able to calculate holding costs and stock ordering costs. Following from that, we've got our economic order quantity. So the order quantity that minimizes our total annual holding and ordering costs. And then the third key area here is inventory valuation. So remember, we may value our inventory using the FIFO, first in, first out method, or LIFO, or the weighted average method. So there are key areas in our material costs in labor. This is quite a straightforward section. Two key things to be comfortable with here. Number one, the different payment systems. So we might be paying our production line workers per hour worked or perhaps on a piecework basis. So we pay them per unit they produce. And the second area is to understand which labor costs are direct and which labor costs are indirect. All right, so without further ado then, having a look at our first question in this area, we are asked what would be the effects on the economic order quantity and the total annual holding cost of a decrease in the cost of ordering a batch of raw materials. Okay. So, we want to look at the effect that a change in our cost of ordering will have on our economic order quantity and our total annual holding cost. Now, to know this, we need to understand the relationship between our holding and our ordering costs and the economic order quantity. Now, this relationship can be shown graphically. Where on our <coughs> y-axis, we've got total cost. And on the x-axis, we've got order quantity. Now, our annual holding costs then, as our order quantity goes up, our annual holding costs will also go up. Remember, our annual holding cost is calculated as order quantity over 2 multiplied by the cost of holding 1 unit per annum. Our ordering costs, so our annual ordering costs, will go down as our order quantity goes up. So remember our annual ordering cost is demand over order quantity multiplied by the cost of placing a single order. Now, our economic order quantity occurs at the point where our annual holding costs are exactly equal to our annual ordering costs. Now, what we are being asked to assess in this question is that if this figure here, if our cost of placing a single order decreases, what does that do to our EOQ and our annual holding costs. Well, first of all, if our cost of placing a single order goes down, 
what is that going to do to our annual ordering costs line? Well, presumably, this line is going to go down. If the cost of placing one order drops, then our annual ordering costs at all order quantities will be less than it is at the moment. Now, our annual holding cost line stays the same. So, if our annual ordering cost line has moved down, what has that done to our economic order quantity? Well, our economic order quantity is going to be at the point where our annual holding costs are exactly equal to our new annual ordering costs. So we can see then our economic order quantity has come down, so it is lower. We can also see that our annual holding costs have come down, so we've gone down the annual holding cost line which means a reduction in our cost of ordering will cause a decrease in both our annual holding costs and our economic order quantity. Having a look at our multi-choice options then, the correct answer has to be D. If there's a decrease in the cost of ordering, both the EOQ and our annual holding costs will be lower. Okay. Having a look at a question then on our labour costs. So we are asked if an employee produces 200 units in eight hours on a particular day, what is the employee's gross pay for that day? So we're just calculating their daily salary then. What information have we been given? So an organization operates a piecework system of remuneration, but also guarantees its employees 80% of a time-based rate of pay, which is based on $20 per hour for an eight-hour working day. Okay, so this is a minimum wage then that is in place. We're told three minutes is the standard time allowed per unit of, outwork, of output. Piecework is paid at the rate of $18 per standard hour. Okay, so we need to calculate then, if this person has produced 200 units, how much are they going to get paid? Now remember, when we have a piecework system and a minimum wage in place, then that individual is going to be paid the higher of their piecework wages earned and the minimum wage. So, calculating the minimum wage should be straightforward. We've been told that the minimum wage is based on $20 per hour. They'll get 80% of that based on an eight-hour day. So the minimum wage then is $128. So we need to calculate then, if they have produced 200 units, have they earned more or less than the minimum wage? So we've been told they'll get paid $18 per standard hour. So we need to work out how many standard hours work have they done. To calculate their standard hours, that is going to be their actual production. multiply by the standard hours per unit. So their actual production is 200 units. We've been told that the standard time allowed is three minutes. So that's going to be three over 60 in hours. 
So that gives us ten standard hours. They're going to be paid a rate of eighteen dollars per standard hour. So they have earned a hundred and eighty dollars, which is clearly higher than the minimum wage. Which means the amount they are going to be paid is the higher of the two, or the hundred and eighty dollars. So the correct answer is D. One more question in this area. We are asked in this question: What is the economic order quantity for the inventory item to the nearest whole unit? Now you should be very happy. If you see a question like this in the exam, if we need to calculate the economic order quantity. Remember, the formula for the EOQ is given to you in the exam, so this isn't something you need to learn off. You'll be able to read from your formula sheet that the economic order quantity is two times our demand times our cost of ordering divided by our cost of holding. And we need to calculate the square root of all of that. So all we have to do then is read through the information in the question and pick out the relevant numbers. So we're told the purchase price of an item of inventory is twenty-five dollars per unit. In each three-month period, the usage of the item is twenty thousand units. Now we just need to be a little bit careful here. When we're looking at our demand figure, we need our annual demand. So our annual demand, if it's twenty thousand for each three-month period or for each quarter, then it's eighty thousand in a year. We're told the annual holding costs associated with one unit. Equate to six percent of its purchase price. So our CH figure, the cost of holding one unit per annum, six percent of our purchase price, or six percent of twenty-five, and that gives us one point five. So our economic order quantity then is the square root of two times eighty thousand. Times our cost of ordering twenty divided by one point five. Punch that into your calculators. What do you get for the economic order quantity? That's right, C one four six one.